Hello and welcome to a Vector Tuts Quick Tip Screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham. I'm going to show you some time-saving tips to make a shiny shield effect that you can apply to any shape. First I'm going to make a basic shield shape, draw a rectangle, and I've drawn a guide out in the center of it here. Then take the Add Anchor Point tool, which is under the Pen tool, or you can just press the plus key. Then I'm going to add a point in the center of the top segment and one on the bottom. Now take the Direct Selection tool and move the top point up a bit. Select the two bottom corner points and move those up as well. You can hold down the Shift key so they move straight up. Take the Convert Anchor tool and drag it on top of the corner points so they make a curved path. Again, you can hold down the Shift key while dragging so that the curve moves in only one direction. I'm just going to adjust the height a bit, but your shape can be whatever you like. Now we're going to add some appearance attributes to the shape, and I'll move the appearance panel over. You can see that we have a three-point black stroke on this shape with a fill of none. You can access the stroke panel directly from the appearance panel, and you can also just quickly change the color or the stroke width from here as well. I'm going to change the width to 20 points and change its color to a medium gray, then click to open the stroke options and align the stroke to the outside of the path. And there you can see that the stroke is sitting on the outside of the path, now I'll click the Add New Stroke icon at the bottom, and it will add another 20-point gray stroke above the first one, although this one will be aligned to the center of the path. This stroke will be my main shield shape, so I'll change its color, then go back to the stroke panel and increase its width, and align it to the inside of the path. And there's the two strokes, the darker gray one is above the lighter one. The first stroke I created is going to be the outer bevel of the shield, so I'm going to go back and decrease its width. Now I want a stroke for the inner bevel, so I'll make a new one, change its color and width, and align it to the inside of the path. Right now it's on top of the other strokes, but you can drag its position down below the other two so that only a bit of it shows, forming the inner bevel. Keep in mind that this is still a single path with three strokes applied to it. If we look at it in outline mode, you can see the single path. Lastly, I'm going to add a fill to the path, and I'll make it green. And just as you can with the strokes, you can move the fill's position, so I'll move it to the bottom. So this is the basic structure for the shield. I'm going to save this as a graphic style to use later on other objects. Just drag it to the Graphic Styles panel, and if you like, give it a name. Again, this is still one path with strokes and a fill applied to it. In order to apply gradients and effects to it, you have to expand the appearance. And you do that under the Object menu. Now if you look at it in outline mode, you can see that it has been released to its component parts. It's still a group, so select it and ungroup it. Now I'm going to add some simple linear gradients to give it a metallic look. I already have some prepared, and I'll apply them to each shape. I want this gradient to go up and down, so I'll enter 90 degrees in the angle field in the gradient panel. Same for the outer bevel and for the inner. On the outer bevel, I want the gradient to go in the other direction, so I'll change its angle to negative 90 degrees and fill the inner shape with this dark to light gradient so that it looks like an inner bevel. And I'll use this nice juicy green gradient for the fill. Now we want to add a glassy highlight to the fill, and I'll do that using its shape. Go up to the Object menu to Path, Offset Path, and enter a negative value so you end up with a copy of the shape, only smaller. We want the highlight just on the upper part of the fill, so to divide the offset path, take the Arc tool, which is underneath the Line Segment tool, and draw out an arc where you want to split the shape. You'll use the arc again in a minute, so make a copy of it for now, just by pressing Command-C or Edit Copy. Now select both the arc and the offset shape, grab your Pathfinder panel, and press Divide. Take the Direct Selection tool and delete the bottom part. Now fill the highlight shape with the black and white linear gradient, then go to the Transparency panel and change its blending mode to Screen, and knock down the opacity to about 80%. Adjust the gradient with a gradient tool if necessary, so it looks like a glassy glare. Now we're going to add a highlight to the main shield shape, so go to Edit Paste in Front to paste the arc exactly in the same position it was when you copied it. If you forgot to copy it, you'll have to go back a couple steps and start over. As before, select both the arc and the shield shape, and press Divide in the Pathfinder panel. Don't delete the bottom shape this time, however. Select the top shape, go to the Gradient panel, and reverse the gradient. Then use the Gradient Annotator to adjust the gradient until it looks shiny. Remember the graphic style we created earlier? 
Now you can apply that to any shape, expand the appearance, and then color the shapes as before. And as long as your highlight is that black and white gradient in screen mode, you can change the fill and the highlight will work with any color or pattern. Once you take some time to set up a graphic style, you can make a whole slew of shiny shields in seconds.